that I thought was going to be quite simple until you put food in front of me. Y'all are me surprised. <laughs> Did everybody watch the entire show? <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> kind of trying to... I'm sure you all know, I mean, the first elf of color and all these things and the big, you know, we do it for the people, the fans in mind. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. Hollywood hates you and they want you to know it. Amazon's Rings of Power joins Disney's Little Mermaid and Netflix's Cleopatra as the latest brand ambassador for racism. Tolkien is turning in his grave. Prime learned nothing from the backlash to season one. Instead, season two is doubling down on the identity politics. See, art is truth. Woke is a lie. And it's another code word for power and control. And racism is just Hollywood's latest tool to divide people into enemy camps. And the only way to fight division is to unite. And then together, fight the lies. Everybody, I hope all of you are feeling good and fighting fit today. Why is it important to bring Hollywood to heel? Because we defeated racism a long time ago and they're trying to bring it back. I am the first female black dwarf to have ever been seen cinematically or to touch Tolkien's work. Bigotry isn't going to save rings of power with doesn't matter how many cast members they bring in to try to reprogram the audience to believe in. So you're telling a, a fantasy story, even a classic story, but you're telling it in 2022. You want to see the world as you know it to be, even though it is fantasy. And you also want to see the world as you aspire to see it. To me, this is the only way to do it. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. That's a recipe for disaster. It's no different than substituting great storytelling for a race-swapping gimmick, which certainly didn't save Disney's Little Mermaid from drowning. The Little Mermaid's box office drop is horrible for Disney's live-action remakes. Of course, we could also ask Netflix how well they did after perverting the facts. The appeal of Cleopatra is that we imagine her, that everyone can imagine her in their own way. I imagine her to have curly hair like me, and a similar skin color. That's not how this works. So Cleopatra is now one of the single worst rated shows in television history, bringing in a 3% Rotten Tomato score. What else do the producers expect to happen? They try to twist history and push Cleopatra as black, which is about as believable as Jada Pinkett Smith being a loving, devoted wife. So what happened, Jada? I got into a different kind of entanglement. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. And I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, cinema is the rare art that unites people, regardless of their diverse backgrounds. It brings them together to simultaneously share similar emotions at the same time, to laugh, cry, and cheer together. And this used to happen all the time. Back in the golden age of cinema, you used to have creative talent that respected the art and then respected the audience. It's completely different with today's latest crop of activists. I'm looking forward to hearing some great speeches tonight. All art is political. All art is political. The only people who think art is political are the ones who are trying to manipulate you into believing the lies that we all hate each other. Divide and conquer. And Duvernay, she wasn't done yet. To that end, she created a platform called Array Crew, a database to promote the hiring of underrepresented professionals and people of color. Array Crew is just the latest purity test for Hollywood studios to prove their dedication to the cult of woke. The creatives who embrace this agenda think all of this is laughable, a lie, a rationalization. High agents and managers of white folks in the industry, the actor and director Natalie Morales tweeted in November, for fuck's sake. Please stop blaming diversity hires for why your client isn't getting a job. It's either that you're not working hard enough or that they're not good enough. Be honest with them. You're harming us. It's funny how racists always out themselves. But thank God they do it. Then you got Amazon, who refused to follow in Peter Jackson's footsteps even after he laid out the winning formula. We had no interest in putting our messages in, into this movie, but we thought that we should honor Tolkien by putting his messages into it. Wow. Man is a genius. Instead of heeding his powerful words, Prime partnered with DuVernay's Elitist Club, a club that includes some but excludes most, making Rings one of its latest members. Um, especially those fans that look like us. Yeah. That's racist. 
And then you had Amazon twisting Tolkien's timeless mythological masterpiece and turning it into a modern social justice commercial. It is everything. It is everything for um, people of colour. It is everything to progress forward as a woman of colour and to be part of a redress of balance within this world. What the fuck are you talking about? If you enjoy the channel, please do me the favor. Watch the video from beginning to end because the longer you watch, the more it helps YouTube in ranking it to share it with the rest of the world. Thank you, my friends. You press the button. We all win. Sounds like a plan. Now, you know what really grates on my nerves is the way that they use Tolkien's life's work. So many beloved classics, franchises that we hold near and dear in our hearts, they're holding them hostage like they're real-life Sauron and Saruman. How to survive the revolution? By becoming its most ardent supporter. Best way to defend yourself against the woke is to outwoke everyone, including the woke, one writer said. Suddenly, every conversation with every agent or head of content started with, is anyone BIPOC attached to this? Unfortunately, cowardice is contagious, and it's also what corrupted Hollywood right to its core. Studios are no longer producing dreams. They're making recruitment videos to sell an agenda. And to top it all off, now they're playing dangerous word games to hide their true sinister intentions. Instead of calling it racism, which would expose them for exactly who they are, they're now calling it representation. Instead of bigotry, they're calling it diversity. Instead of prejudice, it's equality. So when you get fans that are angry at Amazon for trying to transform disrespect in the dollars by ignoring Tolkien, you don't get the showrunners who are going back to the drawing board. They're sending the cast out to attack. Rings of Power star Sofia Nomvete on fighting racist backlash. My place in this show is not just a celebration. It is an act of defiance. Not long ago, the only thing we cared about was great storytelling. That's it. Not the culture, ethnicity, or physical characteristics of the cast and crew. But today's generation of actors like Sofia Nomvete, the only thing they care about, the only thing they can do right, is parroting the red carpet cult's ideology. And so I march to the showrunners and I beg them to make this moment matter. I beg them not to make her subservient or just the wife of or the funny fat friend. I beg them to make her quite a sexual titan. She noted that her character gets an on-screen kiss, wears the least clothing, and has her own drive and ambition. Wow. Someone wasn't breastfed as a child and needs a little bit of attention. It seems that Sophia not only wants to push an unhealthy lifestyle on children, but she wants to be the latest role model for the body positivity movement, or as it's also known, how to feel good when you're having a heart attack under the age of 20. And so I focus on the millions and thousands of people who are supporting and screaming from the rooftops of excitement. What the hell are you talking about? So you want us to believe now that millions of people supported and loved y'all. So let me ask, where did all those people go when it came time to record the ratings for Amazon Prime's Rings of Recycle Fantasy? <laughs> now, some are going to claim it's not the actor's fault. They're simply doing what they're told. And I completely disagree because everyone has a choice. And yes, choices have consequences. Some are easy and some are hard. Some come at a steep price. Except that is what makes us who we are. That's what defines us. You want to be true to your character? You want to honor your word? Then you can always hold your head high. You want to lay down with dogs? You're going to stand up with dirty fleas. And guess what? Hollywood right now has a lot of fleas attached to the entire industry. Especially this last year where um, uh, ideology is more important than art. Way more. Certainly to the awards. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, ideology right. trumps art. That, ideology right. trumps individual Terrible. effort. Ideology trumps good. Ideology trumps yeah, entertaining. There's two kinds of movies, virtue signalers yeah, uh -huh. and superhero movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tarantino was right. But what's more obvious is that Tinseltown has forgotten the words of a great man who laid down his life in order to ensure that people someday would never be treated again as second-class citizens or judged by the color of their skin. Does I have a dream? children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character i have a dream today instead of honoring dr king's legacies we got legions of woke cultists embracing old sin so they can spin culture into chaos which in their mind gives them a shot at controlling a future i remember my grandmother saying to me i don't care what they tell you in school cleopatra was black 
Well, your grandmother lied to you. But the facts are the facts, and your feelings don't change reality. And that's a lesson Disney's Little Mermaid is learning right now. The Little Mermaid's gutted at the box office. The flick won't be walking anywhere because it doesn't have legs. I, I understood that reference. The Mouse House used the name of the original animated film, but then they gutted the story. And then they injected into the tale a bad batch of Botox feminine just to give the live action update a little bit of a modern flavor. I had no specific agenda for change. You didn't have an agenda to change anything. Anything except the characters, the message, the theme, and a few words in the lyrics. That's nothing at all. The Little Mermaid's new Kiss the Girl lyrics were written by Lin-Manuel Miranda because people have gotten very sensitive about the idea that Prince Eric would in any way force himself on Ariel. Okay, it's time to set the record straight. Prince Eric never forced himself on Ariel in the original. Not for a second. It's only the Mouse House and the Cheese Chasers who are trying to change reality. They're trying to push this affirmative consent agenda. And by that, they're saying whenever two people come together, they're going to need a contract in triplicate, signed, notarized, and witnessed by three people before they can hold hands, let alone kiss. If that's not an agenda, I don't know what to call it. See, Disney's no agenda agenda actually has an impact on the culture and on relationship. It kills romance in the cradle and then later cripples marriages and ends up obliterating what's left of the family. Could you imagine if we had this no agenda agenda of Disney's decades ago? You wouldn't have some of the greatest romance I've seen on movie screens or the kisses. Great news is the era of woke is at an end. Good people are standing up. And I'm sorry, I don't think that there's a minority or a majority in the country that has to be catered to like that. Mm -hmm. Are we crazy? Do we not know that art is art? This is so patronizing. It's so, it's so thoughtless and, and, and treating people like children. Woke is a sham. It's not about high ideals or saving the planet. It has nothing to do with that. It's about total power and control of the few over the many. You know how Hollywood recruits these people into their cult? They look for the weakest people who wish to feel powerful and strong and good about themselves. If you want to break their grip and control on them, we just have to remind everybody of what they love. And once you hear true passion, you'll never mistake it for anything else. I need something musical from you, Vigo. I have to have something, the slightest bit of something. That's the real deal. That's how Vigo Mortensen was truly touched by Tolkien. It also shows us how to win. We stand tall, we hold the line, and we sound the horns. Now, if you like this video, if you found value in it, all you gotta do is hit the subscribe button, push the notification bell, and leave your thoughts and questions in the comments down below. And you remember that we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.